a lonely island off Australia's coast. Our reporter, Raphael Lauer, lived here for four days, along with the hermit and former millionaire, Dave Glasheen. The Robinson Crusoe of our times lives in a much more modern fashion than expected. Raphael wants to find out more during dinner. Why did you move to the island? <laughs> no, good question. It was after the stock market crash, 87. I lost a whole lot of money and lost my family and uh, all my material means, basically. How does it feel to lose everything? Not good initially, but I, I, I didn't have the money in my hand. It was a real estate, shares, it wasn't real money in my head. And I was a victim of the banks. And they've treated little people like me like a gangster when they took our house, our home we lived in. I'm, I'm in the bank pleading with them, saying, give me some time, I'll pay rent. But try to sell the house in a, in a collapsed market. Didn't even advertise the place. And someone inside the bank bought it. You know, this is very bad, corrupt stuff. When was the moment you said to yourself, OK, I'm leaving the table, I go? Yeah, that was about four years later. Uh, things all happened. My marriage failed. Property's gone, family's gone. Uh, I'm here, a new life, you know. So, and that's what you do when you're in trouble. You, you've got to really think hard about what you're going to do. So this, this seemed a natural thing for me, get away from stress. It was clear to me. This man is not crazy. Actually, he's quite clever. But is he happy after getting away from everything? A new morning in paradise. My first night on this lonely island was quite moist and a bit scary, but all in all, okay. Like every morning, Dave gives me my load of work. Young adults from all over the world can also live on Dave's island in their work and travel year. In exchange, they have to help with the workload. There's enough to do, and at 72, the body isn't quite as strong anymore. And that worries me because life on a lonely island is also dangerous, as I was about to learn. On the third day, Dave wants to go fishing with me. No, seriously, are there crocodiles in here? Yeah, yeah. Okay, they're friends. They're local pets. Are you kidding me? You know, it's pain, they eat in one go. How big are they? Up to 10 meters. No, you're, you're, you're yeah, kidding there's, me. There's one nearly 10 meters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're not here at the moment, the crocodiles? No, we can't see them. They're, yeah, pretty, they're, they're, they're pretty big, they're twice as big as the boat, a big one, so they're hard to hide, you know? They're not transparent. They're easy to spot. Right. Do they attack boats? No. They, they okay, okay. People. Dogs are best. <laughs> people and dogs. Actually, a crocodile ate Dave's longtime partner, his dog Polly, on the beach. The modern Robinson deals with it unusually. But with Dave, a lot is unusual, such as his technique of fishing with a line at full speed. It doesn't work. According to Dave, he pulls a fish out of the water almost every day. This time, however, the hook gets caught on a rock underwater, and neither show signs of reappearing. It usually wouldn't be much of a problem, right? You get in the water, you get the hook out again. But with 10-meter crocodiles swimming around here, nobody is eager to jump in, not even him. Incidentally, Dave's second dog has been bitten by a taipan snake on the island, the most poisonous snake in the world. Dave thinks it must have swum over. His island is free of poisonous snakes. Either way, there is nothing that would bring me or Dave into the water. 
we have to call the fishing off. And what does the modern Robinson do if he doesn't catch any fish? That's right, he gets meat from his solar-powered freezer. Oh wow, does it work? The spoiled fishing trip gives me food for thought, however. What would Dave do if something really happens to him? The answer is given to me directly by the 72-year-old himself. This is where I fell over, right here. It fell over here? Yeah. I, I tripped on this, well this wasn't here at the time, Yeah. so I put that there now, but initially I come in here, the inverter was, was going, making noises, yeah. so I needed to turn it, it was 5 o'clock in the afternoon, I had a beer in my right hand, and, and I needed to turn that off, so I walked in here, and I tripped on this, and I've gone crash, and I landed right down here, like that, like that, boom, just went whack, and I've got my beer here. Yeah. And all of a sudden this hip broken. Well, I didn't know what happened, but I knew I hurt myself. So I had a quick sip of beer. And I thought, oh, shit, what am I going to do? So I got myself up here. I could feel the pain. And I dragged myself up here. <coughs> I've got a broken bloody hip or something. Oh, fuck. I had to get to the house. It took me about an hour from here to go 100 metres in, in terrible pain. Because I knew it hurt myself, I didn't know exactly what happened. And I thought, well, I've got to, I can't stand here, and I've got to ring and get help. So you have a telephone? The telephone was working. Yeah? It's not working now, it's been, it hasn't been working for over a year. Okay. But the week after I fell, the telephone went out. A special helicopter flew in from Cairns, Australia, 700 kilometres away to bring Dave out. Since then, he's owned a satellite phone. But would it be any use during a critical emergency? A rescue mission takes at least six hours after receiving an emergency call. Much more often, the modern Robinson uses the phone to talk to his older brother, who lives in Sydney, or his son in Cairns. Every other day there's a call. They even try to visit him on the island about once a year. It takes three days for Dave to fulfil Raphael's request and show him some photographs. It's an album of an impressive life, but also one full of obviously painful memories. It's my daughter who died. Eric, I'm my only daughter. I miss her like crazy. She took her own life. Alcohol. Up here. Not oh, in Cairns, actually, but she worked in Lockhart. And she was a superstar. She fed all the community. She started jobs. She did things. Hung herself. Bloody horrible. Yeah. In Cairns. Doing an AA. You know, AA? Mm -hmm. like an old, yeah. And it's still difficult, you know. You never get over it, you know. Like this? Raphael's last night on Restoration Island is revealing. So Dave, don't you feel lonely sometimes? Of course. You know, it's... Uh... It's sort of hard being here on your own sometimes. Uh, over a period, you know, you hang for intelligent company, particularly female company. But you know, I've I've spent a lot of time here now, and, and I like my own space, and I love all this. This is like my company, if you like, the ocean. Nature is my company, if you like. So I feel like I'm living in nature here, and uh, that's a good feeling. I wonder what would have happened to Dave if he'd not rented the island. A homeless man in Sydney? A beggar? I realised that although he lost everything in his life many times, he didn't give up. And thanks to the island, he was always able to keep one thing, his dignity. The modern Robinson. Dave. What do you wish for the future of Restor Island? Well, I'd just like it 
to be a place where other people can come and restore themselves, as I have done. An exciting man, an adventurous escape from everyday life. No, no, no. There's no one. But live there. I don't want to live with that much loneliness. I'm really looking forward to the chaos in the city. Okay.